Before we get started, so we have a little sign up um, if you want to be notified. So we're, um, my company is, uh, we're, we're big in the wide space um, and wanting to create tools for wide authors. So if you're a wide author and want to learn about some of the promotional tools we're hoping to create in 2023, just go ahead and add your email. If, you're already, if you've already added your email to our, one of our clipboards, then you're already on our list. But um, we just want to make sure that we get that information out to you. So I'll pass this around. Uh, how many of you all have went to the, uh, the, the Google auto narration panel yesterday? A couple of you? <clears throat> so we touched on, on a couple of things that are in there, but we have you know, we get into more detail than just the shiny new toys. So I just want to kind of see how many people have a little bit of knowledge with it. All right. Um, so we'll get started. My name is Monica Leonel, and I'm a, uh, I'm a nonfiction author. I also publish fantasy under Solo Storm. Uh, I have learned a lot about the wide platforms. I've basically been wide since the beginning of my career. I'm very interested in the audio, um, the new audiobook feature at Google Play that came out last year and um, basically worked with Craig to try to get my books into narration. So, um, Craig, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm a uh Craig Price, I write primarily uh, fantasy, epic fantasy, dragons, sci-fi, a little bit of nonfiction. Um, president of some local writers guild, so I've kind of helped authors, you know, learn all the platforms and and walk through them. Um, I got into the AI audiobook narration uh, early. Um, so I saw someone else have a beta, and they happened to have the link that they used for the beta, and I snuck in that way and started playing around early. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've been. Uh, proofed a lot of uh, the audiobooks and played around with it, so I, I have experience of, of how to manipulate their tool because it's not, it's not foolproof. You have to do some proofing in there. Yeah, so we're going to share some of that with you today. Um, the talk is called Can You Make Money from Google's new auto-narrated books feature. Um, so we wanted to just start pretty generally. So why authors do not create audiobooks? Um, Couple reasons: the book isn't selling in other formats. Uh, the price to create audiobooks is prohibitive. Usually, they range about for for a tra um, traditionally sized novel, they range about three thousand dollars to create. Um, the process to create audiobooks is complicated and time consuming. You have to find a narrator. You have to figure out distribution. You have to um, figure out payments. Um, audiobooks can be hard to market and sell. So for some authors, it takes a year or more to make the money back um, through uh, Audible and other, and through um, other retailers uh, that you can get to through Find Away Voices. Um, yeah, it's hard to make your money back on audiobooks. Some audiobooks never earn out, uh, which makes it hard to continue. I feel like the microphone is going in and out. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. Um, but it feels... You know, it's hard to kind of continue the series. You know, similar to ebooks, you need multiple audio to start to make money. Um, and when series are not finished, it makes it hard to promote the first one. So, but there are lots of reasons why authors should create audiobooks and why they are really helpful to authors. So, those are having more formats of your book. Um, being in more storefronts, so ebooks are sold primarily at five major retailers, uh, but audiobooks are sold at about 30 or 40 different retailers internationally. Um, there are more opportunities to sell. Accessibility is important, um, so being able to reach readers who cannot read print, or either print or ebook, or for whom it's not convenient to read those formats. Uh, also, audiobook sales have had double digit growth every year for the past 10 years. They're the largest growing um, format in the book space. So we think of audiobooks as um, having three different formats. 
Uh, one is the AI read or auto narrated, which is probably why you're here today. So before you had to use um, Amazon Polly or um, maybe a software that used Amazon Polly like Takia to create a book, but last year Google Play released their um, auto narrated tool. So the second format is narrator read. That's probably the format that most authors are most familiar with. Um, it's basically having a person or maybe two people to read the book. And then the third one is the audio drama. So that would be cast performed. Um, it can sometimes include music. Uh, so it's a little bit more like a theater production. Um, and it's more likely to appeal to people who are very big into audiobooks. Uh, so just some general stuff with the Google AI narrated books and uh, and what we've come across with them. Um, the pros for the Google AI audiobooks is very inexpensive. You know, that's the biggest holdup for most authors is just how much money it costs to produce audiobooks. You know, we all want to get there, but some of us just, and sometimes it doesn't make sense for all of our titles. Some of the titles that sell better, the ones that don't sell better, you know, uh, we need a cheaper option. Um, so they're inexpensive. You can either do it, right now they're currently free to do on the Google Book Play Store. They're talking about eventually maybe having a, a charge for that, um, but it's still, it's fresh out of beta. There is no end date, um, but right now it's absolutely free to go in there and create your AI audiobook. Um, or you could spend a couple uh, a couple hundred dollars to have an audio proofer go through, and if you, if you have, you know, 10, 15, 20 books, maybe you don't want to go through there and listen through every one of them to try and correct all your, your little things that you need to correct in there, and you just want to hire it out. And those audio proofers range from 30 to $50 per finished hour compared to 200 to you know $1,000 per finished hour for, for narratives. Um, they're fast and easy to create. I mean, you, you, have your, you, you upload your ebook first, and then you create audiobook based on the ebook that's already published, and it's instantaneous, it's, 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 it's there, it's ready. And then you just gotta start making some tweaks to uh, when you do your proofing, and then you hit create audiobook, and it publishes to the store within, uh, within two hours, generally. Um, it's easy to make changes and update. Um, if, if you, you know, go through it, and then you start listening to it later, like, oh, I missed something, you go back in there, and you can fix it real quick. You know, you could, you're in full control. Um, you can add content reviewers easily. This is a, a feature that not a lot of uh, people who use Google Books actually use. If you go into the, the content section of the book and you, you don't see it at first when you first create all your books, it doesn't show up until after you kind of through the process and you go back and then the content reviewer section appears and you can type in someone's email. As long as it's a Gmail account, because it's all Google based, you can add content reviewers and they can have it go straight to their Google Books um, application. So you can have both uh, your fans audio proof it that way, you know, uh, or you can, uh, you know, send it to, you know, to your subscribers and just add some of their emails to say, you know, hey, thank you for supporting me. Here's a free audiobook to try. Um, and then you can publish other, your, your, your auto-narrative books, you can publish it on other retailers. Um, Google allows that as long as it remains published on Google and you don't undersell your price on Google. So if you price it for four ninety nine on Google, you can't put it up on YouTube to stream for free. But if you can price it at free on Google and then put it up on YouTube. So there's, that, that, that is one thing to keep in mind. Um, but there are several different places that are starting to take, the, take them. And it's pretty simple. Once you go in there to the, the content after it's been generated, you just download a zip file. Um, it comes with, uh, once you unzip it, it's a MP3 file for each individual chapter. Uh, they're called sections when you, when you download them. Um, then you just, that's how you upload them to all the platforms is by chapter anyway, so they, you can move them around and, and label the chapters if you want. So it's all ready to go, you just click and drag. Uh, I will make a quick note about the, the click and drag thing that some people don't know. If you're dra dragging into like a book funnel or, uh, or Kobo for audio, you want to click the, top, the chapter one, and then you want to shift, click the bottom one, then you want to go back up to chapter one and click and drag it from there. Otherwise, if you click and drag from the middle somewhere, sometimes those chapters will become a, a bit of a mumbled mess. Uh, the cons. So you're not, a, it's unable to publish everywhere. Not everyone ex accepts AI narration yet. Um, we, we feel that it, that it is coming. It's one more at a time, people are, are doing it. It's just, it's gotta be a different, it's a different listener experience. You know, some, there are voracious readers and there are voracious audiobook listeners. Um, 
myself, I used to listen to three to five audiobooks a week, every week for seven plus years. I mean, I, I'm a voracious audiobook listener, which is why I jumped into this, because this is very interesting to me. I've listened to that old five years ago text-to-speech stuff, and <laughs> this is way better. <laughs> um, but right now, obviously Google, uh, Kobo is allowing it. Uh, you uploading direct from Kobo. You, 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 if you have a Kobo direct account, it doesn't show up on the dashboard. You have to send them an email and ask for it. But as long as you have something published with them, they will give it to you. Um, drive through. Um, it's a real small retailer. Um, they're mostly known for RPGs, drive through RPGs. They also have like drive through cards. Well, there's another one called Drive Through Fiction. So, and they're primarily fantasy and sci-fi um, stuff on there. Um, but that's a, another one that you can be able to upload them to. And there, there has been word of uh, several of the uh, people in my community that have been doing these things. They've been talking to Publish Drive, and Publish Drive seems to be coming around on it. But I haven't verified that one yet. But uh, there are different people who are interested. We have, I've also talked to a couple of the retailers, and they're interested in it, but their distributor that they use currently does not accept it. So um, it's, it, it's just a step-by-step -step process. It's still brand new that it's gotten this good. Um, so some of the other cons is it struggles with uh, the, with homonyms, uh, heteronyms, uh, you know, uh, read, read, you know, all that kind of stuff with that. Obviously, it's an a, it's an AI. It's trying to it it's learn it's learned a lot. It gets a lot of them right, and it's getting more and more of them right the more that you do it. And the the trick with that is, you know, is as you go in and you go to the word, you right click it, edit pronunciation, and then you tell it which way to go. And it's literally learning as we're we're essentially Google's beta test to make their audio stuff better. And that's why it's free right now. Um, the ebook must be live on Google Play. That is going to automatically exclude KU authors. You know. Um, now, as I said, it's it's just out of beta now, and they're talking about getting to a charge, you know, charging for it later on in the future. Maybe when that happens, maybe it will open up to the KU authors. I don't know, um, but I think if uh, they want to profit. They want to help us, but they want to profit. So they don't want to use this, make a book, and then just, you know, <laughs> take it everywhere else, not them. So it makes sense. Um, currently, you can only do a single voice for the entire book. So a lot of people who have, you know, romance, alternate POVs, you know, that is not a thing yet. But they are working on it. Um, they were saying they were hoping to get it by the end of the year. But it said, they said it's probably going to be... January, February, March next year, because it, it was a big undertaking. They don't want to just do the alternate chapter. They started hearing all the feedback. They're like, we want to go down to the, to the line, to the word level, to be able to change the voice. Now we can actually do dialogue to characters talking and have a different voice so it's clear. Um, so they are working on it. Um, the timeline is early next year, hopefully. And I think that's all I got on this one. Uh, so there, are, you know, there are there are some there are some cons. It requires proof of listening. I have a whole other thing. I don't know how much time time we got to go through this at the end, but I have a whole list of the little random quirks that that you have to proof. I'll just mention a couple of them real quick. So like sometimes the word I they it pronounces it as first, like you know King Henry the first, right? So like sometimes you have, some weird things we've had to do is like change that uppercase I to a lowercase I for it to say I. <laughs> Um, another uh, funky one is the question marks. Sometimes the question marks will treat it as a full stop. And so if you have, you know, sh uh, you know, a question she asked, it treats it like a full stop. There's too much pause there. And what we've learned is if we eliminate the space between the question mark and the next word, it will flow better. And so there's a lot of little weird quirks um, with, with the tool. It's not, you know, 100%. It's yeah, stuff like, uh, uh, you know, all of your, uh, your stuttering, your extra... Uh, S voices, you know, like you have like a snakeish type character, you know, so how you doing, stuff like that. Um, you know, there's a, a bunch of those all caps. Sometimes it'll spell it out instead of, you know, like say it. So there's a lot, a lot of little quirks and stuff you got to kind of play around with. Um, a quick couple of slides, uh, how easy the process is. Once your book is published on Google, you just come here, you publish another book, Create an auto-narrated book, and then you find your ebook that's already published with them, and that's how they prevent you from just creating an audiobook without having the ebook there first. They actually search for what you already have in your store, and then you can publish it as an audio or auto-narrated book. And then under the content section, this is how you can add your content reviewers. If you want, to, you can add your own Gmail account, your own Google Books account, which you know Google is Google. So if you have a Google account, you just got to download Google Books and log in. <laughs> uh, but you can add reviewers there. You can add yourself there. Really easy. Type in the email. 
and then instantly within five, 10 minutes, if that person has Google Books app on their phone, they will get a notification that said, this book was added to your library. Uh, you can select a voice. Right now they have 50 different voices. <clears throat> and so you got mostly, mostly English speaking. They have a couple of Spanish speaking voices now. You got some, some British, English. Um, very impressive voice. Uh, we, we're not doing the, the voices here, but you know, the Google has their table out, out there and they have headphones. You can go and listen to it. It sounds really great. So this is the proofing your audiobook screen that you get. As you can see, you have all of your chapters on the left um, on your navigation menu, and then you have the actual text in there. And then you have, you can play it right here and listen to it and proof it th you know, through the actual dashboard. Um, or you can, as I said, you can, you can uh, create it and use it as a concert review. You can listen to it on your phone as you're you know, running errands and then just you know, take down notes um, as you're going. There's several different ways you can proof it. Um, you can save your changes on the bottom, create your audiobook. Um, you can, at the very top right, that arrow there, you can exclude that chapter. So if you have stuff like your copyright pages or, you know, whatever pages that might not be applicable for the audiobook, you can go ahead and exclude them. Um, I generally ha I have a small little template that I use for, you know, I've listened to tons of audiobooks. So, like, I went back and listened to the beginnings and endings of several of them to kind of get a template for how they say, you know, how they introduce and how they, they end it. Um, I don't know if I include this in here, but just something simple, you know, um, to kind of show, you know, narrated by, book by, series, and then at the end, the same thing, thank you for listening to, and then just kind of add those manually, and I exclude the regular copyright. Google Books has the best dashboard out of any of the platforms, in my opinion. They also allow you to add people to your account to help you manage your account. And not just regular, uh, they have options. They have lots of options for how much and what you want them to see. You can give them full administrative access. You can give them just access to your book catalog. You can give them, and right now, uh, Google started reaching out to me because I, I was the only one they found who's actually proofing audiobooks, uh, AI audiobooks. Me and my wife are doing it. And uh, so they reached out to me, asking me about what kind of stuff that we would need to proof audiobooks for people. And so they're actually making a, a new one that's literally going to be just auto-narrated. It will literally will prevent me from what, the mistake that I made <laughs> of creating an e-book for someone that I, when I thought I was in my account. <laughs> I'll literally just be able to do the audiobooks. Sorry about that, Monica. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I mean, there's there's a, a bunch. It's really easy to type in the email, give them what permissions that you want, and and their, then your account. As soon as they log into their Google Books account, they can they can have a little drop down and go to your account and help you proof it. So if you want to get like uh, you know your fans or you hire a, a, a proofer to to do to help you know correct all this stuff. Um, if you want to have super fans that are very interested in helping you out, you know that way you don't they don't have access to all of your sales data and all that kind of stuff. That they can just proof it for you. Um, edit pronunciation. This is, this is the important part when you're proofing your audiobook. So some authors, as they're playing around with this, they change the actual text in the box to try and make it sound right. You don't want to do that because Google's not learning anything. If you change the text in the box, they might think, oh, maybe the author has made a typo. I'm not going to save this data. But if you go in there and something's pronounced wrong and you right-click it, edit pronunciation, this box pops up. And if it's like, you know, homonyms, heteronyms, it will have options. And you can click on the different ones and hit the little play button, a uh, little microphone button on the right, and it will play it out for you. And you can select the correct one, and you can save it. And then as you can see, there's this, this uh, character name that I have here, one of over a thousand different scenarios when it comes up in the book. I can apply once, or I can apply to all. Now, careful with the... Uh, apply to all if you have a word that's inside of other words, you know, right? So you might, so it's, it's, you know, some of those you might want to just go and, and look at each one. But if it's like, hey, this is a character name, it's the only vari variance of this, you can go ahead and apply to all. And when you do it like this, it will, it will learn, it will get better. And I've actually noticed after proofing, you know, over a dozen uh, of these audiobooks that I get to later books in the series, I'm like, you know, hey, this isn't a problem here anymore. Um, and so it is learning. And you can either type it out uh, manually in the little box there. You can hit a little microphone button. And you can speak into it and 
pronounce it how you want it to be pronounced, and it doesn't work all the time. Sometimes it doesn't understand what we're saying because we are authors, you know I mean? We have a hard time telling, it, telling anybody what we're saying. But a lot of times it will catch that and it will convert it for you. Sometimes you have to play around with it, try and figure out exactly how to say it, say it and put in different letters in there, but it's, it's a really nice tool to be able to, to customize that pronunciation. And then here you can find words. So if you do end up finding, and as I said, I don't recommend this for, for doing your, uh, for, for the find and replace part, for tr changing your words in the text unless you actually made a mistake. But if you did make a mistake, you can find and replace all of those. And when you're audio proofing, you will find mistakes. You'll find typos and stuff like, hey, I had this character spelled, you know, uh, uh, two, two letters were flipped on, on, you know, half of these characters. And you'll find that as you're proofing. Uh, but you can also find in documents. So a lot of times what I do is I try to get my, I try to go through and edit all the stuff I can on the front end. So when I'm proofing it, I don't have as much to do. So I will search for all the typical, uh, the, the homonyms that I know that I use, you know, uh, read, read, um, bow, bow, you know, a bunch of those. I'll search for those first and correct those and save them all before I get started. And that's a good way you can find in document, find something, and then start editing all of those. And then another important part <clears throat> that not everyone is using right now is the contact support button, that little exclamation point. Google support is very responsive. They are one of the most responsive supports out there. Um, and if you have a problem, if something's not working, so like one that was I kept on running to is the word uh, content, content versus content. For some reason when I try to edit the pronunciation, sometimes it would just freeze up and it wouldn't work. So I made sure I sent, like, sent this to him. While I was doing it, it took a screenshot. I sent a message. I told him what was going on. And within the week, they said, okay, we're going to look through it all, and we think we fixed it. I mean, they are on top of it. They want this tool to improve. So if you're running into complications or little things that you're noticing, make sure you use that. And then once you go back into your content, you can download the audiobook. Uh, right there, and you get the MP3 file like I was uh, mentioning earlier, and you can upload it anywhere you want to, uh, including uh, if you have a BookFunnel account and you have the audio feature on there, you can be able to sell them direct. <clears throat> so here's some of the proof listening issues that I ran into. You know, your, your homonyms, read, read, content, content, bow, bow, uh, fantasy names, created words. Um, and the problem right now, and I meant to ask them this, but I will uh, during this week, is right now you cannot migrate those from book to book. So if you have a, uh, my wife just got finished proofing a, uh, a fantasy series of, you know, 11 books, and we would literally have to go in there and change all those character names to how they're supposed to be at the beginning of every book. <laughs> we couldn't just say, you know, hey, migrate these over. Um, so that's a bit frustrating currently, um, but was as responsive to Google is to, to updating stuff, I'm hoping this is one that they're looking at to, to push through soon. Um, your, your stuttering, pauses, scene breaks, uh, snake dialogue, uh, any of your sounds, um, mm -hmm, all that kind of stuff like that, it just, it's not there yet. Um, so some of that, if you use a lot of that stuff in your dialogue, you might have to you know, adjust it a little bit to make it sound better. And we've learned a couple of, uh, of tricks to, for making it sound better um, that, that I've, I've written down somewhere. Now, all caps usually spells it out. There's no good emphasis, you know, underlining in bold like you do in your, in your books. It doesn't translate. They don't emphasize words in, in Google. You can kind of do a couple of things to, to, to trick it to emphasize stuff like add random question marks or commas or periods to try and make it pause the way you want it to pause. Um, but that is another thing that they are looking at to try and improve to get more, more granular on how you can control that. Um, your pauses and your scene breaks, there's not a whole, there's, there's not a big pause for a scene break. So there's a little trick that you can do where you can essentially take that scene break and break it into another chapter on your header. It doesn't say the chapter by the header title, it says it by what's in the text box. Therefore, when you're listening to it on the app, it will have that bigger break um, between those two scenes. But it also show up as two, you know, you have, have to label it. You might just say, you know, chapter eight, part two as the actual, you know, header. So that way if someone's navigating for the headers to find out their place, it will say that um, for them to click. Um, but they, they have been made aware of this. And so hopefully it's another thing that they'll be working on trying to make better. and go ahead and take over some marketing.
All right, so how do you market these audiobooks? Um, I think that it's so new, there's, there's not actually a ton of people doing it, and um, we ha but we have come up with some things that are working for people. Um, so the first thing is that because it's different than the human narrated audiobooks, you want to make sure your cover reflects that. So uh, Craig has created a really great template, I think, um, that yeah. I'm using. Should that on the slide. Oh, it's on the slide. Okay. So we'll look at it in a minute. But it has um, auto narrated audiobook on it. And that can really help to distinguish um, so that the, the customer knows what they are getting, which is really important. The first free and series is working really well. Um, so the authors that we know who are using this, they create these auto-narrated books for their whole series. They put the first one free, and it works very similarly to an ebook. Um, they're able to send that out. Um, it's good. People will pick it up, and then they start to buy the next books in the series. Um, lowering pricing and giving samples to readers, um, kind of a lot of the same stuff that works for just marketing ebooks wide is working really well for these. Um, so sending out a sample or posting it on a podcast or um, you know creating like an in Instagrammable little sound bite, um, a TikTokable sound bite, those things are working really well to just bring visibility to the audiobooks. Um, Making sure that your audiobooks link up with your actual ebooks. Um, I don't know. Do you know if that's working on various retailers right now? So for Google, for sure. When you're on Google, you can you can click. There's a little button on the top of the metadata page that says "Switch to audiobook version" or "Switch to ebook version." So it's it's very prevalent there. Um, some of the other retailers, it's not quite as as seamless. If you you know, do a search for a title, you will see the audio, the AI audiobook pop up on Kobo and stuff like that. But um, there's just, there's not as much metadata driven with audiobook retailers in general. It's a different experience, a different way for people to find them. Yeah. So, um, some, so, if the if the audiobook and ebook are connected, then you can use a lot of the same stuff that you would do to optimize your um, ebook descriptions on retailers. And so, if you're not familiar with how to do that, so every retailer is different. Some like index descriptions, for example, some index titles um, with your keywords, and uh, you, so then when people search for keywords, then you, they can find you. Um, so doing some of that, making sure that all of that is linked up. Um, we have a uh, a free, um, I think it's like a seven part video series about creating an ultimate description for all five of the big five retailers. It's in a Facebook group. Um, I should probably put it somewhere, somewhere else, but it's in a Facebook group. It's free. It's called, um, but the Facebook group is called Go Wide, Grow Wide um, Algorithms and Advertising for Authors. So um, you can join that group and you can watch that. That will help with the audiobooks as well because um, it works. Um, it, I think there are some differences on some platforms, but I think some of them, like I think Google Play, it does. It does basically work the same. Um, hang on. Uh, so optimizing listings, um, and then book funnel. There's um, some audiobook group promos. Do you want to talk about that? For a uh, yeah. So there's the the book funnel uh, and store origin has the same stuff. You know, you can go through. You have different ebook promos, and they have uh, they have a section for doing. Uh, or you can create it as an audiobook promo instead. Um, and a bunch of different authors will put in their audio their audiobooks and then you'll be able to cross promote to newsletters and people and you can either put it in, up there for free uh, on your newsletter or you can do it as a as a sales one but there's a lot of those promos that pop up at least monthly uh, one or two of them and they've started doing every now and then you'll see someone who will create one that's like you know AI audiobooks and we have a little, so uh, I have a Facebook group which I have a, I have a link at the end um, that we talk about it's called a, a wide for the win W the, the, the initials for wide for the win. I can't, you know, I can't math right now. <laughs> but uh, at wide for the win AI audiobook discussion, and we, we talk about a lot of this stuff uh, in the group, um, and so we try to start coordinating a couple promos with each other. Um, but, but essentially, all those authors will send the promos or send that promo link to all of their subscribers, and then you can try and get people to get the the free sample. You can upload just a sample version if you want, or the whole audiobook, you know, first free in series, um, and it, that cross promotion. Uh, sales page does really well with that. 
Yeah, and like I said at the beginning, um, my company, Rider MBA, we're looking at all these different retailers and like some of the promotional stuff that they're doing. So like we're looking at like can we build an email list of readers who are interested in um, auto narrated books so that authors could then um, share, you know, uh, add their book and that could be shared with those readers. Um, just because there's there's like a lack of cross promotional tools for um, some of these newer features on other retailers. Um, so I think we have one or two more slides and then we'll open to questions. Um, so this is uh, the, this is, well, you can talk about this. Yeah, so this is the, uh, this is the audiobook template that I made. You know, all audiobook covers are 2400 by 2400. And essentially what I did is I took the idea from the old uh, recorded books. They had that kind of strip on the side. And so there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can put your book cover on there. You can stretch it wide. Some people don't like how it stretches wide. So another thing I played around with is uh, this is one of the ones I was helping proof, um, which he's part of Writer MBA as well. And what I did is I took two copies of the cover. And the second copy is behind the first, and it's stretched. And then it's blurred at 30%. And so it just kind of blurs, but it's the same color scheme going on. Then I take the actual co uh, cover itself, the ebook cover, and I center it on that back image. And that way, you know, it's, it's nice, it's clear, it's concise, it, it, it has color throughout instead of just being like the cover on a black surface or having it way to the left and having just a huge black gap on the side. Um, and then as you see, that little uh, the part of the audiobook name is a little person showing like a little speech, and it says AI right there. And so we want to be very clear to listeners that these are AI audiobooks. And, you know, there's a lot of narrators right now that are, are scared and worried about where this is going. And, you know, AI audiobooks is not going to replace narration ever. Narrators are too good. AI, even as far as advanced as they will get, will never be as good as a narrator. But it's a different product. Your eBooks, you know, $2.99 to, to $5.99, AI audiobooks probably for you know 499 to to 799 um ish right and the, you know up to ten dollars maybe and then your your uh narrated books are more of your premier tier you know your 10 to 15 dollars kind of like how the uh uh the subscription models for audible and stuff work it's a different experience readers there are audio audiophile readers who literally listen to you know i used to listen to three to five audiobooks a week there are people who listen to like 10 15 audiobooks a week and they cannot afford fifteen dollars an audiobook, and you know I couldn't find a lot of audiobooks a long time ago, and I listened to a whole lot of text to speech stuff, which was awful. And a lot of people still do it with the like the Amazon Echoes and everything. And if this is an option instead, and it's a little bit more money, um, and they can afford it, it's another good option for them. Yeah, I mean, I think it's similar to um, how uh, ind independent authors started putting ebooks for cheaper. You know, it's it's good for those voracious readers. So, um, kind of pulpy. All right, so um, we wanted to talk. We wanted to just mention a couple um, alternative non-retailer sales. So YouTube streaming. Um, there's actually a talk going on right now about somebody who did that, um, who has also uh, auto narrated and human narrated books. Um, you could do a podcast streaming as well. You could add advertising to it. Um, for the YouTube streaming, you know, I know people who are doing YouTube streaming and they're making fifteen hundred to. 3000 extra dollars a month without really having to touch that. Um, YouTube really likes those long uh, videos and likes the engagement on them. So if you have audiobooks um, and a big catalog especially, then that could be good for you. A quick preface on the YouTube videos, you have to have, I think, 1,000 subscribers before you can put ads on it, right? Yeah. So you have to be um, monetized on YouTube, and there are requirements for that. And then, um, yeah, there there are some. I, I would say watch the um, uh, Victorine Lysky's presentation, which is unfortunately going on right now. But um, <laughs> so these are, yeah, it would be nice if they were kind of back to back or something. But um, yeah, she's doing some great stuff with that, and I'm sure it's recorded. 
Um, also, Substack and Patreon serialization, uh, you could add it to some of your fan base platforms. You could sell them through Kickstarter reward tiers or offer them as bonuses. Um, I have done that and it's worked really well. Direct sales from your website is another great place. So maybe you create all of these, they're $5 on retailers, um, but maybe you can do a bundle of the whole series and that's you know 20 or $25 that you're selling direct. Um, that's great for those readers who are reading, you know, five books a week, that's a great deal for them. All right, um, that's the end of our presentation. Here, again, here's where you can find me. Um, the best place, I have a substack called aggressivelywide.substack.com if you want to kind of keep up with, like I said, we're trying to put together some promotional tools to help authors um, promote these types of books. Um, that Facebook group I was talking about that has the video series on the ultimate description for all retailers, um, that is in that group. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash go wide grow wide. Uh, and then, uh, so I do audiobook proofing and, and, and more, uh, claymorepublishing.com slash author dash services. I said my wife been do have been doing a lot of proofing. I, we both uh, audio proofed well over a dozen titles each. Um, and so uh, if, you, if you have a bunch of books and you don't want to go through the effort of, of proofing them, um, right now there's not many people doing it. I don't know of anyone else besides me and my wife currently. Um, Google's been, reached out to me about it because they were wanting to get, like, start listing audiobook proofers on uh, like Readsy and stuff. Um, so it's still new. There will, there will be more of us uh, soon uh, to, pro to proof it. But you know, a lot of authors that have 10 plus books and don't want to spend, you know, 10 hours in audiobook to li listen to. And it takes more than 10 hours, you know, because you, you're, you have to listen through the whole thing and then you have to do a lot of the add and work and fix all the changes and everything. So um, it's, 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 a, it's a good bit of work. It depends if you have the time or not to, to want to do it or if you have a good fan base that you can just say, you know, hey, who wants to help me prove these audiobooks? You might have some good fans that will be willing to help you out there that, li that love audio. Um, or you can, you can reach out to me as well. Um, then the, the Wide for the Win AI audiobook discussion Facebook group which is a very long title. Um, so this group, facebook.com slash group slash WFTWAI audio. Um, we talk about a lot of the audio stuff in there and the little quirks and tricks that we've been finding. You know, the, the, the heteronyms, the homonyms, the, like the ones I was you know, t telling earlier. We discuss all that and we discuss marketing tactics and stuff. It's still a very uh, small subset of authors that are currently using it. It's still fresh and brand new uh, of a tool. Um, but that's a good place to, to learn more about it. Um, and then I have a, a self-publishing for authors uh, book, which I actually have up here. It's just uh, it's a walkthrough of all the different platforms, how to log in, you know, depending on where you're at in your career, actually go through, you know, Amazon, Kobo, uh, Google, with lots of pictures and screenshots. I've had to help a lot of uh, uh, retired people that don't know computers very well and make PowerPoints for them and stuff. And I said, you know what, I just need to put all this into a book. Uh, so if you're looking for more of that detailed stuff, I do have some books like that. And then uh, real quick on the bundles, uh, we were talking about, you know, boxing our, boxing our audiobooks up as a set. Right now, Google just started releasing the beta of series bundles for ebooks. It's still in beta. I was able to sneak in because I've been contacting you know Google directly. Um, so right now, it's just ebooks. But you can essentially say if someone buys two books in my series or three books in my series, they get X percent discount. And after they get that fully pushed out, they are going to jump straight into work getting that to work for the AI audio as well. So that's another interesting thing to come in mind that will help with marketing once it gets there. All right, uh, does anybody have any questions? There's a microphone right here in the center so that your question can be recorded for the live stream. So feel free to hop on up if you have any questions. Hi, hello. Um, so how do you become a, a proofer for Google AI narration? Um, so I just happened to uh, be doing it, and people ended up knowing that I was doing my books, and I did a couple of books for other people, you know, my friends and some of that. And so right now, there's no real platform or form to to really be doing it. But here soon, Re I talked to Reedsy as well, and they said that they are reworking their, their that page that they have where you can put post, you know, the job posting page for like editors and stuff like that. And they did mention about adding that to there. So once that comes live, you know, maybe get with, get with Reedsy and say, you know, hey, I'm interested in doing this. When are you going to 
available, when is it going to be available for me to be able to list myself as a person to do this? Thanks. Hello. <laughs> no, this microphone's not for me. No? Um, I actually have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Uh, mm -hmm. First one, you didn't really touch on it, I don't think, was narrator speed. Um, I, I've been playing with this since I got here on Monday and talked to Google. I went, wow, this sounds great. Uh, so the narrator speed, when I'm changing it to get the kind of tone I want, that's going to carry over to how it's published, I assume? Yes, yes. So I, I have talked to Google about that, and it does. But you do want to be careful with that, because just because just because it's what you like, audiobook listeners, big audiobook listeners, listen to lots of audiobooks, they're used to changing their speed anyway to according to how they like it. Yeah. So you might, want, you, know, you might want to tweak it a bit. It's like, hey, I love it at 1.5. I think one's too slow. You might just want to publish it at 1.25 just because you're not every listener. Mm -hmm. um, but they, do, they can tweak it as well. Yeah, so they're tweaking it when they're listening as well. Mm -hmm. Good. And a, a couple of technical things. So... Um, you mentioned about scene breaks, just making a new chapter. Yeah, you can you can break the chapter. You can actually you can actually create a new chapter, copy paste. You might even be able to break it in the middle and just create it as a new chapter. And it only reads what's in the text box. Yeah. So as long as you don't put you know chapter seven part two in the box, it won't say that. It'll just have that delay. It's it's harder to proof to proof listen that way because it's you proof listen to a chapter at a time but when you actually proof it in the uh you know the audiobook app itself you will hear there's more of a, a, a pause between those two okay and then similar for opening and closing credits you're just creating a new chapter and yes in whatever you need. i'm essentially creating a new chapter with like you know two uh, one or two sentence line on the on the front and the back end yeah. um and i have a little template for that um i'll I might have shared it in, my, in, the, in that group. If not, I'll probably share it again in the group. I have mentioned it in the group, but I will get that template together. Yeah, I mean, I, get, I mean, we have the thing. So if you're on the email thing, um, Craig can Craig will send it out. Yeah. So so just if if you already had your name, then great. But like, he'll, you've he'll got send my email notes. so many times now, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and last one, <laughs> listener you. acceptance. How are we finding? Are, are people liking it? What's what's kind of the I reaction? mean, it's it's not for everybody. But the biggest attacks that have been on it have been narrators that have felt job scared. That's been the majority of the attack on it. And a good narrator is never going to be replaced. However, the Google AI can replace a bad narrator. And so some of these narrators are having to up their game, you know. And like a lot of us authors have had to do, you know, five, ten plus years ago when indie author became a thing. And in the beginning, it was a lot easier. And now it's a lot more competition. It's a lot more, it's friendly competition, but we've all had to up our game. Some of those narrators have to up their game a little bit. Now, there are some listeners who, this isn't for me. There's been a couple of, you know, low-star reviews from it. But, like, overall, it's, it's been pretty accepted because, like, you know, hey, this is much cheaper. And, you know, I, some listeners, it takes them 10 to 15 minutes to get into it. And then once they're in, it's like, okay, yeah, this is, this is not bad. This is fine. Yeah, I would say that uh, the where where auto narration is at now, it's probably um, to me it's better than a hundred fifty an hour per finished hour narrator. So maybe it's not better than the three hundred fifty per hour um, finish or per finished hour narrator, but I think it's at least um, better or at least on the same level. So and it's far cheaper. So um, speaking to what Craig said about uh, um, narrators needing to up their game, that's just. You know, sorry. <laughs> uh, thank y'all for being here. I write narrative nonfiction, so throughout my book, there are graphics or pictures. What happens, you know, as the, what happens with that? So I have done a nonfiction book with, in fact, I actually did this book in AI narration. Um, and it will literally tell you the image name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, Okay, whatever so just, dot jpg or whatever so i've had to clean that up so yeah it's 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 i mean it's not going to work great for huge picture books but if the information is still good and there you know you might just add a little description there of you know imagine us imagine this or you know i mean it's, yeah. it's obviously not gonna be able to take that picture and turn it to a thousand words like they always tell us <laughs> okay. um yeah so when you work with a human you have to do the same thing anyway so um what they have done for my books in the past is uh, have like a supplemental PDF or something that is downloadable that they point to at the beginning of the book and then um, also offer a description. So you kind of have to write a description of the graphic and the 
for the book, for the auto, for the audio book, um, and then and people can go look at the thing later. And it seems like it wouldn't work, but I know for myself, I sold a ton of ebooks and print books because of it, because people said, I want the audio book, and then um, I also want to be able to read it later um, and digest it a little bit more with the graphics and stuff. So it actually worked out great with my human human narrators, and I'm sure it's kind of the same thing. So Yeah, yeah I'll probably put that in the opening and closing credits. A, a, a link to your website or something like that where you can see the pictures. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Can you tell me if this format will work in the public library system? I mean, that I we haven't done uh, we haven't gotten to the public library yet, so I don't know because right now, so like you know, uh, Overdrive, Overdrive slash is, Libby and mm -hmm. Hoopla are very big in the uh, uh, you know library system, and they both are using Findaway Voices, and Findaway currently does not accept AI audio. Um, strangely enough, though, they did partner with, what, Deep Voice a couple years back, which does AI audio, Deep so it seemed like they were interested in it, but mm -hmm. they never made anything past that. So currently, it's not going to be, be able to put it in, in libraries, unless you maybe talk to a local library and, and talk about you know, giving them actual CDs, um, but hopefully it'll be coming. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Let us know if you have any more questions. Mm -hmm.